you positive heads out there. It's so good to be back with all you beautiful reflections of the one source consciousness that creates and animates all things. If you're new to this podcast, of course, we're super happy to have you here. And if you've been listening and enjoying for a while, I would be super grateful if you would please take a moment to give us a review on Apple Podcasts. It's one of the best and simplest ways to pay it forward and help others find the show so that they too can tap into the powerful perspectives and positive vibrations we are collectively emanating. The other unique and magical way to share this show is by sending any friends you think would benefit from listening to this podcast, our Game with the Universe link at positivehead.com forward slash game also listed in the show notes, which will serve them up a quote-unquote random episode when they click it. Just instruct them before clicking the link to close their eyes for a moment and sincerely ask the universe to queue up the episode that contains the insight and perspectives that they most need to hear at this point in their life journey, and then click to listen to whatever episode is synchronistically served up to them. I have heard time and time again from people about the incredible results they received playing the game. So just tell your friends, magical results are guaranteed or their karma back. All right, all you positive heads, welcome, welcome. Here we grow again. It is a fabulous Friday here in the studio as I record. And as always, I am grateful to be back with each and every one of you. How you doing out there, whenever, wherever you're receiving this broadcast? Hopefully feeling fine. I'm feeling pretty good today myself. I have, um, as far as what I want to chat about, what I want to wax poetic about uh, on today's episode, I've seen a a few really cool, powerful uh, thoughts, quotes, perspectives shared uh, over the last week or two, just in various ways, came one came in the form of an Easter egg uh, <laughs> that someone set up here at the Mystic Manor, uh, a quote. Uh, one came a note from the universe. One is uh, uh, from Corey Allen, who's been on this podcast a while back. One is from Eckhart Tolle, who I'd love to have on this podcast, but haven't yet. Um, so I thought I would just like pull together some of my, my quotes that I've uh, enjoyed and appreciated over the co- last few weeks. And they all kind of weave into each other, uh, as most wisdom does, right? And yeah, just share a little bit uh, about that. Um, the first one that I'll, I'll just jump right in here. Uh, the first one that I would like to chat about is, or share, is from uh, Mike Dooley, uh, Notes from the Universe, uh, and really was very timely for me. Um, I was dealing with something that uh, a decision that was bringing up a bit of fear for me. And some of that fear was like uh, based in projection or imagination, right? You've, I've said it before in the show, imagination is just a poor, uh, our worry is just a poor use of imagination. And this, uh, this note from the universe really jumped out at me uh, due to the timing of it. Uh, surprise, surprise. And it, it, it said, it's impossible to be afraid, Brandon, when you dwell in truth cool, the universe. And then the PS is, the greater the fear, Brandon, the farther from truth. And um, yeah, it's what a powerful concept. It's impossible to be afraid when you dwell in truth. Uh, And the greater uh, the sense of fear you're tapping into, the further disconnected you are from understanding and trusting, trusting the mystery, trusting, trusting the process of, of your life. And you know, the first thing that comes to mind, I mean, I think there is a time and place, obviously, for fear, right? It, fear is a natural instinct. Let's say if a lion all of a sudden, you know, appears in front of you and charging you, you're going to experience fear and you're going to run and it hopefully will save your life. So I don't think uh, Mike is referring to that sort of fear here, the kind that keeps you from putting your hand on the hot stove. Rather, uh, something that is a projection in your in your mind, right? You're making up ideas about what is or isn't uh, ahead uh, what could go wrong, 
And that, how many sleepless nights have we all experienced? How many days has that ruined for people? Um, just getting, getting caught up in some projection uh, about the future, uh, particularly. And when you're doing that, you're really saying, uh, you know, what's to come is not what's best for me. And, um, and therefore I'm, you know, I'm at odds with it. And when you are in the state of full trusting what is to come that, and, and it doesn't mean it won't bring up an accelerated heart rate or any of those things, even if it is intense or challenging, but you, you, you face, you, you, you tap into courage, right? You tap into courage and you tap into trust. And if you're tapping into courage and you can't, Uh, tap into trust and you tap into surrender, right? Then you fear sort of falls away because fear is this, you know, sort of false uh, energy and idea where those things, those energies aren't really present. So, you know, it's it's a great gauge and, uh, you know, sort of litmus test to know like, oh, if I'm experiencing great fear from projections in my head, I'm, I am the far, farther from the truth uh, of my connection with source, which is always providing me what I need. And it's always going to um, uphold me and always going to allow me to find my way through, even if you might be projecting something that is to come coming to pass, right? Uh, well, this too shall pass, right? And nothing is going to last. And, and, it, and there will be uh, a great strength or lesson that comes from anything that comes that you may have feared. So really using this, you know, hmm, what what sort of fear am I experiencing? And using that as a gauge for, for where am I in correlation with my connection with source and the truth of the matter that it's, you know, um, you know, as uh, Julian of Norwich, the first book ever written by a woman in the English language put to print who you know, in the middle ages, like, you know, got really sick and was on her deathbed and supposedly had an experience with Jesus. She said in it, uh, her takeaway from experiencing Jesus, uh, you know, the energy of of Christ consciousness on her deathbed, uh, all shall be well and all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. And when you trust and believe and tap into that truth, fear is gone with the weather, right? It's it's just um, it's just a energy that is not tied to the truth of the situation in which you find yourself. Next quote that I saw that I love: uh, "You have a plan for life; life has a plan for you. Follow both." What a great one, right? And it, it, this really goes into oh, my plan isn't coming like I thought it was, and therefore I'm scared, I'm fearful. As I always say, you're playing checkers, your higher self is playing chess. So have your plan for life, uh, be tapped into your plan for life, be excited about your plan for life, be willing to switch it on a dime. Uh, and most people's uh, lives do. The, the path is is a zigzag way more than it's a straight line. I mean, none of us have predicted what's to come and gotten it right uh, most of the time, I'd be willing to bet. So be willing to be flexible with your plan and know that life, your higher self, source, has some sort, your soul, has some sort of a plan for you and things planned for you that you just can't foresee. They're unknown and unknowable until the time is right. And so, you know, knowing and trusting into that and, and as it shows itself, like, oh, you know, as the in The Mandalorian, they say, this is the way. If <laughs> you've seen that, um, I love that. This is the way. When it becomes a, a, a apparent that this is the way, this is the way that life is leading me, you you are trusting, you are surrendering, you're moving into that that path. And um, this is this is the way to, uh, you know, removing yourself from that fearful state and trusting life and learning to do the dance of following what you think is best versus what your higher self uh, knows is best. Um, And so, yeah. Third quote, Eckhart Tolle. Don't look for peace. Don't look for any other state than the one you are in now. Otherwise, you will set up inner conflict and unconscious resistance. Forgive yourself for not being at peace. The moment you completely accept your non-peace, 
your non-peace becomes transmuted into peace. Anything you accept fully will take you there and take you into peace. This is the miracle of surrender. Hmm, good one. Don't look for peace. Don't look for anything other than where you're at. Where you're at is the perfect state. Trusting it or whatever's arising, loving it. It, it. Set up no inner conflict, no resistance to what's unfolding. This is how you move like water, become like water. N- non-resistance, it goes around everything. In water, as soft as it can appear and gentle and fluid, look at what it does to a hard, firm rock wears it into nothing, right? Because it's, it's actually more powerful to be fluid like this. And so stop the fight. All the stress, all the fear, all the anxiety, all the challenge is coming from your resistance. If you completely accept your non-peace, he, he, the, the irony is that the non-peace becomes peaceful, right? I'm, I'm peaceful about being non-peaceful. And ultimately that peaceful state trumps everything. And so, you know, accepting where you're at, this surrendering process, becoming like water, is the path to, you know, first navigating through all the challenges gracefully and and efficiently and quickly and becoming your greatest and grandest self, you know, getting on with it, getting past the blockages. What you resist persists, what you accept, you move through. So as soon as you start surrendering to what's arising, uh, even that the times you feel resistance in you, like, right? This is so layered. It's so layered. So uh, non-peace, okay, that's fine. I accept it. Nope, I just moved into peace. What a shift. What a trip, right? It's so, it's such, it's mind-blowing when you think about it. Okay, let's see. Next one, as I run down my list of cool quotes. That moment when you hear yourself being kind, present, and positive in a situation where you would normally be closed, short, and defensive is a sign the work is paying off. Whew, this one I can definitely relate to. Um, Being kind, present, and positive in a situation you'd normally be closed, short, and defensive, you you are expanding. You have expanded, right? And this is one that I can relate to so much, getting snappy and short and defensive and agitated and just like, ah you know, using my breath to just tap into, um, you know, an expansive state, allowing someone else when they're professing something that I don't want to hear, uh, something I don't agree with. I'll find myself doing this, you know, this is always a test for me with my partner. Sometimes we're both very strongly opinionated and she'll have, uh, you know, a 60 second you know, rant about whatever her reasoning is, her logic is, why she thinks it should go different than what I think, and here's why, and da-da-da-da-da-da, and on and on. My instinctive, you know, norm, I guess, uh, traditionally is, I already know what you're saying, I know where you're going with this, I don't want to hear the next 45 seconds of it, and I already know why I'm right and you're wrong and why I want something different, and just, you know, save me the pain of hearing your, your, you know, um, insistent, uh, somewhat, uh, you know, aggressive, slightly aggressive stance or argument. And um, I find myself moving into that state now. Uh, And I'm not always perfect, but I am a lot better than I used to be where I just like, I find myself getting kind of like wanting to cut them wanting to cut her off and jump in. And and then I just like, instead, I focus on deep breathing, let her finish, let her finish. And then the game with me becomes how, how calmly can I respond and without agitated energy, can I respond, even though I completely disagree and want it to go a different way, right? Because typically it'd be cut off, I'll cut you off, and and I'll do it aggressively. And so for me, you know, deep breathing, allowing them to finish, uh, and then being as, as gentle, thorough, kind, present, positive, tactful, you can always deliver something kindly and um, calmly. Well, <laughs> I say you can always. Uh, there, there is a path that you always can. I don't always pull it off, and I'm not saying I get this right every time, but I'm, I don't know, 75% better than I used to be, and uh, for me, that's a lot. Uh, of for, for me, every time I do it, 
It, it is. It's such a sign the work is paying off. And I feel so proud. Like, ah, you're overcoming, Brandon, one of your biggest issues, challenges uh, in my own you know, personal path. Um, and, and it feels really good. So pay attention to yourself. And if you find yourself doing any of the things that, you know, I just said that I do, I, I challenge you to, to, to use breathing, make it a game with yourself, allow them to finish deep breathing while they're talking and your, your part of you wants to cut them off and, and, and talk over them. And then when you start speaking, speaking slowly, kindly, calmly as possible you know, if you disagree. And if you pull that off, you're going to feel good about it. It's, it's, it's a win. And, um, yeah, that's where the work lies, right? And our loved ones, those closest to us are the ones who can normally trigger us into those states the easiest. That's why they're, why they're in your life. Cause they're designed to push your buttons, to challenge your growth edge. And when you, when you get it right, you rewire your, your neural networks. You rewire your brain like, oh, this is how I handle it. This is how I behave. And you become more. You become the next greatest and grandest version of yourself. And sometimes it's two steps forward and one step back. And don't beat yourself up there. You know, uh, just like the, the Eckhart Tolle, uh, you know, talking about, um, you know, you're not in a peaceful state. Okay, I'm going to... Uh, completely accept that as well. Oh, I got agitated. Okay, I'm not going to beat myself up for that. I'm going to accept that as well. And that's how you work towards, you know, that's how we we slowly but surely get there, folks. And with that being said, I have a song for you. Well, Prangi has a song for you. It's called Stardust. And this is the Desert Dwellers remix. It's a good one. Hope you enjoy. Till next time, journey well. Love you so, so much.
hearts beat as one, and we move as one. <laughs>